what sort of routines are we talking about? Is this not all exercises are created equal, right? Mm -hmm. Just running isn't going to get it, isn't going to have the same results for osteoporosis, osteopenia. What are we talking about? If, if we put legs on this, how can we help someone who doesn't know what they're doing? We just tell them, learn how to deadlift and, and call it a day. <laughs> I mean, for some maybe, but yeah. no. <laughs> when, the, when you get a, when you have a DEXA scan done, yeah. it's looking at very specific areas in the body. It's looking at the lumbar spine. It's looking at the femoral neck and the hip. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you talk about something like a deadlift or a squat, things that ha have direct effects on those areas of bone. So the takeaway as far as exercise selection is to move towards whether right now you're just, you know, focusing on very basic movement and you are walking and, you know, sit to stand mm -hmm. type movement, you have to know where you're going. And that is towards these multi-joint compound type exercises that you're able to use more load and you're able to <clears throat> drive the adaptations that we discussed. And so it is hard, you know, at a, on a, on a, just a blanket recommendation. Is it three sets of 10? Is it three sets of five? Is it right. 10 sets of five? You know, that, that can look a million different ways. And there's, there's still an art to that, but in general, you know, what, what's recommended with the physical activity guidelines with respect to the amount of resistance training you should be doing is a safe estimate. And then you can start to fit some of these exercises within that now that you understand that there's a, uh, an even greater benefit to skeletal health with these, with these movements. So theoretically, you know, a lot of these studies use two to, they, they use two to three times a week, uh, and they incorporated all of the exercises that we discussed. There was some jumping, some hanging, some punching, mm -hmm. you know, some deadlifting. I think this is probably the key takeaway is that you don't just walk in on all three of those days, let's say, and for all exercises, do five sets of five really hard sets at 85% of your one rep max right. for whatever it is that you're doing. <clears throat> the key is to, for the first few weeks, first couple weeks, for the first two months, it just depends you start much lower than that. You know, you start at, you start at a point where it doesn't really feel like it's that taxing. Right. <clears throat> and, that, and as you start to get more comfortable with whatever that movement is, then yes, you move into something that puts you a little closer to failure, let's say, on a given exercise. But the key point is maybe on Monday, you can focus on once you're past this initial two months, six months, three month introduction phase. Right. You could theoretically say on Monday, I want to start with what would feels a little bit heavier on something for my legs. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just do other, other rep ranges, higher rep ranges. You need to expose yourself to a broad range of reps and, and types of exercises. But on that first day, it's going to be maybe a little bit heavier on the lower legs, right? Via a leg press, via leg extension, via squat. And then on the second day, you say the same thing for something that you want to improve from an upper body standpoint. So maybe you say, I like the overhead press. This is what they talked about in this study. Let's just do the overhead press. Right. You can do it seated. You can do it standing. And that's maybe just the day that you focus on one heavier, heavier exercise. And then you do the same thing on the third day for you either can go back to legs or you can focus on <clears throat> some sort of deadlift movement, something where you're loading the hinging pattern a little more heavier, you know, a little heavier, whether mm -hmm. you're lifting the weight off of a, an elevated surface, thereby decreasing the range of motion. Um, just something again, you're, you're, you're just, you're just giving each movement pattern a little more or a little less emphasis on a given day, instead of just all heavy on this day, all heavy on this day, right, right, and right. Then all my, you know, heavy stuff. And then also you can sprinkle in even in, in warmups, or, or wherever, wherever you won't skip it, some of these types of almost plyometric type movements. And maybe, maybe, we, maybe you wait on that. You yeah. know, maybe you watch a few more videos or, or you, you start with a more fundamental, you know, base of lifting, resistance training, 
little more low intensity cardio, because even though that's not going to do a ton theoretically for bone density, you're doing it for the hundred other reasons that we talked right. about still fits as a part of this. Absolutely. As a, as a part of this plan. But then as you progress, you can, you can mix in some of these low level jumps, low level skips, low level landing. It would things be, that things that look a lot like where issues occur in everyday life with falls and fractures. 